I guess it's about time we said hello to Weatherby. Just talking about it. I thought I told you to stay off my property. What to be, uh, come with me. My new foreman. Yeah, all right, as long as he's your man. Oh, why don't you meet my new foreman, Bert Yates? Mr. Kelly. We've met. Well, Bert's an all round top hand, Ben. I thought he might ramrod the drive. Now, that's Kelly's job. We agreed that my foreman would be trail boss. Well, this is anybody but him. I'd live up to the agreement. Kelly, Smokey found those strays in a draw about four miles out. I got work to do. All right. He's a troublemaker. If you knew him like I did, you wouldn't now, want Kelly to... brought our herd in. He did a very good job of it. Ben's right. We did agree. His foreman would boss the show. Now, my herd's still out. Logan and Carrillo are behind me. Yeah, I know. Logan that. agreed to back Ben's choice. That's three to one, even without Carrillo's vote. He got a nice-looking herd, Ben. Let's go take a look at it. Yeah. It's gonna be a week before the drive starts. A lot can happen in a week. If I was you, I wouldn't worry about Kelly ramrodding anything. Got it, What's that there behind you? Mm. You son of a gun. He must have hermit butt. I bet I chased him back to the herd a hundred times, ringing him down. This will make a hundred and one. Work on your arm, old timer. You gotta catch him, not spook him. Didn't anybody ever tell you about roping other people's cattle? Well, I'm just trying to help. You sure look like you needed some help. When I need help, I'll ask for it. Now that you got him roped, take him on in. Yes, sir. You're the trail boss. What's that all about? Weatherby wants him to be trail boss. That's a little late for that. Yeah, Bert doesn't think so, though. I figured the fun of those hands that eat at the cookhouse as long as we're here. If that chance of that, I'd have a whole hour off. Thank you. you wouldn't like that no better, and we wouldn't have nothing to complain about then. Try me. Pretty good biscuits. Can't say too much if you coffee. Coffee can't say much for you either. See, Logan's made it. Yeah. Ben, you know Kelly used to work for me. Did he ever tell you why I fired him? Bottle trouble, he told me. Whiskey. That's right, and got him in serious trouble. Got him in jail. I know. 
Oh, look, I don't like a man ramrodding a big drive like this. I just don't like it. He made his mistakes, he paid for them. He deserves another chance. I guess Carillo should make it in a couple of days or so. Yeah. Look, I see you're short of horses. Yeah, that's why we brought our herd in early. Wild horse country all around here. Figure while we're waiting for the other herds to get here, we can round up as many as we want to. Kelly gonna boss that too? Yeah. You start out early in the morning, take the chug wagon and as many men as we can spare. You know, Bert knows that territory. Might help if I send him along. Might. Good insurance, too. You know, that's how Kelly got in trouble. Took crew men up in the woods where I couldn't see him. And... You think it's going to happen again? I know it. And if it does, we're having another owner's meeting and a new trail boss. Well, that's fair. Ain't it? Yes, it's fair. <laughs> Two miles out, he said. Then I find the road heading east, he said. What he means by a road is chuckles all the way to the lake. Oh, my way. If I ever... Is this yours? Yes, sir. Sanchez is rotten on you. Rope something with this outfit, you're gonna have a wreck. Well, I've had him before. Then you ought to know better. Harness makers in the barn, go by and get you another Sanchez, huh? Yes, sir. Damn, he takes good care of you, don't he? Probably tucks you in every night. <laughs> he cares about as much about me as a bull does his calf. Right. The chuck old kid. <laughs> Woo. Oh, Kelly. Yes, sir. You pick your man yet? Yes, sir. Six be enough? Should be if I work tonight. You know why they'll be sending Bert Yates along. I know. He's a good hand. And he wants my job. But so do I. That's why I'm gonna make it. I know you will. I got some senses to look at. I better go do it. Black stud. He sure is something, ain't he? That's a lot of horse. Big as I am, he can carry me all day. Thinking about him carrying me? Well, take it easy now, boys. He's mine. You gotta catch him first. Hold up a minute there. We got work to do around here before we start chasing any horses.
But I can get him. As soon as I start him, move! I could have caught that black. You killed your horse if you'd have tried it. That started to run you and your horse right into the ground. Well, now, I might not have caught him, and then you'd have looked good. You let me worry about that, will you? After supper, you boys get your bedrolls and go down and stand guard at the corral. All night? Yeah. All night. Just go on grinning. I'm gonna show that old man up yet. Yeah? That what? Just about everything. Rope and rod and you name it. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, well, you're gonna see it. Well, we work a long, hard day. And we got more hard days coming. The thanks we get for it's to stand all night with a bunch of corralled horses. Well, that's the brakes. Yeah, that's the brakes. But I think come night, I'm just going to take my horse and walk him up that hill over there and ride into Stillwater and get me the drink I deserve. Any of you boys who aren't afraid of old Kelly are welcome to come along with me. I'll drink to that. Now, there's a man after my own heart. Come on. Montana, you and Ames get dressed and go down and fix that corral. We're going to Stillwater. I'll saddle horses. How much more you? I got no saddle horse. You got a wagon team, ride one of them. Or walk. I don't care how you get there, just get there. Hey. 
Hi, boss. Where did you come from? Same place you're going. Hey, wake up, Bart. Boss, it's your match, Quincy. can eat or go without. We ride in 10 minutes. Coffee. Kelly will run you to you fall clean out of that saddle. Not me, he won't. He already did. I was drunk. Next time I'll be sober. Something you ought to know. Kelly used to drink and brawl when he worked for Weatherby. He wrecked a saloon he beat up on some townies. He so what? He killed one of them. Sent the other two to the hospital. together and look like a Sunday school picnic.
this time we stay with the herd, no matter what that stallion does. Come on. You might be Weatherby's hand, but when you're riding with me, you do what I say. You know, I'm looking forward to something. What's that? Hanging your hide to the barn door. Kelly did a good job. Not very. We had to do it twice. Well, it was worth it. Sure was. Bones, I'll need all the help I can get. Oh, now. Oh, now, just hold it steady. Watch 
Watch you don't fall yet. Whoa, now. Easy, easy. Hey, Bert, I got five dollars, says a boss man rides him easy. You're on. Anybody else? I'll take a dollar. I'll take four bits of that. Chuck, old kid. <laughs> well, she's all yours. thing. <laughs> Whoa! All right, boys, let's pay up. I uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Oh, well, it was a little too tough, wasn't it, old boy, huh? Yeah, for this time. Well, I got, uh, I got ten dollars here that says that I can ride that horse if you'll just let me use your saddle. Well, you got yourself a bet. Okay. All right, we'll let Bones here hold it for us. Yeah, so you'll be sure and stay honest. Yeah, you just keep your eyes open. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, Bert. I got five more dollars that says you can't ride him either. You're on. Anybody else? I'll take a dollar. Two bits more. I'll take a dollar of that. I'll take a couple of dollars myself. Let her go.
hope it's not my turn. Oh, I love you when your money's gone, but I can't be with you. Where's my money, Bones? Where's my money? Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, that's nice. That was a good ride you made there. Well, it was an easy ride, real easy. You think that ride will get you my job? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, old-timer, if it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Look, you roped a steer that I missed and rode a horse that bucked me off. But that don't make you a trail boat. Boy, oh, that age will get to you, won't it? Yes, sir, I hope when I'm as old as you are that I can face it. You're brewing for a fight, ain't you? I'm not drunk now. You want to try it? No, I don't want to oblige you now. If I'd bust you up, I'd be short-handed, and I need you to help me break these horses. All right. All right, I'll let you back off, but when you finish breaking the horses, you and me are going to settle it. Yeah. We'll settle it. Yummy. You all right? Yeah, I just banged my knee a little bit. But I've done it before. You don't have to prove anything. Time for supper. Face when he had to pay off. Yeah, I saw it. Same face he wears all the time. You didn't look close. It was a face of an old man fraying at the seams. Bear Queens, your bet. Bear Queens will have to bet a dollar. Call. Yes, sir. His hands were shaking. Eyes watering. You making speeches or playing cards? Well, I'd have to say a little bit of both. Cost you two dollars to call. Pass. You know your luck's sure running good in this card game, but how much luck do you think you'd have catching that black stud? Well, if I knew where he took the rest of his herd, I'd catch him tomorrow. Suppose I ride out of sunrise and locate him. Now, Smokey, you do that, and I'll have me a big black stallion tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you twice what you got there that you can't catch him. You got yourself a bet. Quincy, can I have a couple dollars there? Sure. Me too. Well, I'm gonna have me a... Big black stallion and money in my pocket. <laughs> Let's play a little draw. Right, hey, Bert, found the stud. Where? Beyond those hills. Well, let's go. Now, boys, you dealt out the cards. You let me play out the hand. You just be sure and have old Kelly here when I get back.
You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Run, damn you, run. If you hadn't done that, I would have. Well, that ought to taught you something. Yeah. Yeah, I guess next to me, you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> Find yourself a shady spot, and I'll go get you another horse. Well, how about giving me a lift? Well, throw your saddle up here. Whoa. You don't. I'll take it a little easy, this old thing will buck us off. Keep your feet out of the flat. You just ride. <laughs> Got the herd ready to move out, Mr. Cartwright. Well, good luck, Kelly. Thank you. Keep moving now. Yes, sir. See you when we get back. You take the lead, Bert. All right. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. All right, throw down that big away. Hurry it up. I got it. Come on, let's get out of here. Nobody move. Did everything go according to schedule? Everything went just like you said it would. Well, except my horse went lame on me out there. Ah, uh, well, by tomorrow you'll be able to buy a whole new string of mounts. Set it down. Gently. Uh, if you don't mind, I plan this. Gently. 
gentlemen, gentlemen, please don't act like a pack of roaches. I don't see any brown envelope. You will, you will. Addressed to the First Union Bank of Sacramento, bulging with 12 new $1,000 gold certificates. Yeah, if that telegraph operator over in Fallon wasn't lying to us. He had a completely honest face, otherwise I would never have bribed him for the information. <laughs> Here it is. It's not addressed to the bank, but perhaps we're getting tricky. My dear Lucy, much as I'd like to marry you, I... There's nothing here. That telegraph operator took us for 150 bucks. Well, that should be a lesson to me. Never trust an honest man. They're capable of any perfidy. Oh, there he goes with those two-bit words. How come you even let him join up with us? How come nothing ever works? Chance, gentlemen. Chance. Sometimes the cards are cold and nothing ever works. Other times you come up with a deck full of aces. Jarvis. I do. Why, if it ain't Mr. Cartwright, all the way from Virginia City. Hey, I got a notion that you didn't stop by just to say hello. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, well, I, uh, I, I need a horse. Uh, this one went lame. Well, you came to the right place. This chestnut here is as good or better than anything you've got on the Ponderosa. That's why I came to see you. Ben Cartwright. He may own the biggest ranch in the state, but he still <laughs> has to come to old Mill Jarvis. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think of going anyplace else. <laughs> well, Mr. Cartwright, that's a fine horse. A horse a man can be proud of. Yeah. Them friends of yours? Acquaintances. Well, I ain't one to give advice, leastwise not to a man like you. But I've got to say, them two look mighty sneaky to me. Uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Now, about the price of this horse. Well, look, you know I don't take advantage of people. Not even Ben Cartwright. Well, when you get the bill at the end of the month, you'll be surprised. Now, I'll change the saddle for you. We just got ourselves a horse. Well, what on earth did you use for money? The gentleman is very happy to send the bill at the end of the month. How come? Well, he... He thinks I'm, I'm a rancher from Virginia City. Ben Cartwright. You must be a dead ringer for him. So it would appear. Austin and Joe should be along in a couple of minutes. Well, why wait, huh? This timber, 18 sections, half a township. It's just what we need. We'll take it all. And the railroad will supply the logging crews. Dan, what do you think? What are you asking him, a college boy, for? Ben, the railroad authorized me to go $180,000 for the tract, but I'll take it upon myself to go $200,000. Shake hands, and you've got $30,000 in cash to bind the deal. I still want to hear what Dan has to say. His professors say he's the top forestry student at the university. Dan, what do you think? 200000 is a lot of money, Mr. Cartwright. But you can't sell that tract. You'd be buying a whole watershed. Log the land clean, and you'll have soil erosion, flood, drought. Why do you want to listen to him? You must realize how important the railroads are to this country. Yes, and I also realize what flood and drought could do to this country. You heard what Dan had to say. 
has to be my answer. This isn't my final word, Ben. I'm staying in Virginia City until you change your mind. Nobody, nobody says no to the Central Pacific. Come on. Sorry we're late, Bob. What happened between you and Wentworth? Well, you know what we've been talking about. Dan agrees with us. He, he advised against it, so I turned him down. I think you're right. First off, after that winter snow, a lot of ranchers around here could be in trouble. Yeah. Gentlemen, we are not going to sell the Central Pacific. They threw you out, huh? Quite the contrary. Of course, he was a little surprised to see Mr. Cartwright in, uh, in this attire. But by the time I'd finished with my usual piles of persuasion, he gave us the best suite in the hotel. Charged to my account. <laughs> The best is uh, very nice, but the coat's a little dull, don't you think? I mean, this coat has has some has great style. But it's a little more fancy than what you usually wear, Ben. Now, this is Ben Cartwright. And after all, it is what you ordered. It's a perfect fit, too. Ah, uh, your San Francisco tailors did a marvelous job. Yes, yes, they, they, they did do a marvelous job, didn't they? Excellent, excellent, very handsome. Uh, but I, I, I would like to take that one along as well. A little change, a little variety in a man's life, you know? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. All those work clothes you ordered came in. Oh, yes, fine. Uh, you frayed that collar rather badly, Ben. Yes, I... I think you'll need some shirts and some ties. Yes, shirts and ties. Oh, and a vest. Uh, yes, yes, of course, you a vest. tell Hoss I finally got some vests in that'll fit him. Oh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll tell Hoss. Joseph is easy to fit, but Haas, now, that uh, requires spatial tailoring every time. <laughs> well, they're a pair of fine boys, though. Yes, they, yes are. they are. Shirt, fine boys. string oh. tie. Oh, very good. Very, very. Uh, I think I'll just put all these on now. Oh, I'm staying at the hotel for a couple of days. Why don't you send the other things over there? My pleasure. <laughs> oh, uh, what would you like for me to do with this? Oh, I'm afraid that coat has seen its good days. Why don't you find some deserving so who might be able to use it? Oh, um... Oh, right in there. Thank you. My taste is impeccable. But if you two want to get into that hotel, you'd better get yourselves cleaned up. Any minute, somebody's going to get smart. And we're all in trouble without a dime's profit. My friend, appearance is all. I had to take care of that first. Just make sure that you don't get caught with a bunch of them cards up your sleeve, like you did in Carson City, huh? No one is going to question Ben Cartwright's integrity, we hope. But you'd better have the horses standing by, just in case. Uh, ben Cartwright behaving like a cussed, ornery, stubborn mule. Remaining in Virginia City till I can buy her timber come hell or high water. Morning, Mayor. Morning, Sam. Uh, Mr. Wentworth, do you know our mayor? Mr. Wentworth is with the Central Pacific Railroad. Oh, a railroad man, eh? Always a pleasure, sir. Uh, anything I can do to make your stay in our city more enjoyable, you just say so. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, that'll be just uh, two dollars and... Mr. Cartwright. Whiskey, please. Sure. And a drink for these gentlemen. Yes, sir. Did you join me in a drink, my dear? Miss Wells. Dixie Wells. Miss Wells? It'll be the day when I say no to a drink. Thank you. Now, bartender. Make it a double, no chaser. Here's to you, Mr. Cartwright. And to you, Miss Wells. This is a rather big occasion. It's the first time I've seen you in the Lucky Nugget. Well, I had never been aware of its attractions. Well, I worked in the Silver Dollar for a couple of weeks. You didn't notice me then. My dear, that's a mistake I will never make again. 
You know, you're nothing like I figured. I mean, I thought you'd be kind of stuck up and hard to talk to. Kind of like a Sunday school teacher, only rich. <laughs> My dear, I can tell you that Ben Cartwright is not at all like that. You know, if I hadn't seen you on the street before, I would just swear I was talking to another man. I can assure you, my dear, I am what I always was, warm and human. Would you like to go over and sit at the table in the corner, talk and kind of get to know each other better? Well, that would be... Uh, that would be very nice, but uh, not right now, in, in a little while. Uh, bartender? Yes, sir. Uh, what do I owe you? No hurry, Mr. Cartwright. When you leave, or I'll send you a bill. Well, thank you very much. Uh, is uh, the seat open, gentlemen? Sure, Mr. Cartwright. Sit down. How much is a, a stack? A hundred. Now, you don't need cash. We'll settle after the game's over. After all, if uh, Ben Cartwright isn't good for a stack or two, who is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope I don't spoil your game. I haven't played for quite some time. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Cartwright. We'll help you. Thank you. You're very kind. <clears throat> I guess these bits. Two pairs of fives and sixes. Three threes. Yeah, your luck's changing, isn't it, Mr. Cartwright? Well, we're grateful for small mercies. Don't get discouraged, Mr. Cartwright. Your luck's bound to change. Well, I'm afraid I'll need more chips before that can happen. How about four more stacks? All right. That's a total of eight. Yes, that's right. You're a hundred and a hundred more. Well, I, uh, I'm not sure about this hand. Well, I, I, I do have just enough chips, I believe. Yeah, I'll see. Three ladies. Three kings. Well, I, uh, I believe this is, uh, this is better. A royal flush, it sure is. You see, as you said, at the end, I did get lucky. I've been watching you. I got a notion that you've been dealing from the bottom of the deck. No one has ever questioned my integrity. Then it'll be a brand new experience. Now shove those cards over here. Anderson, drop that gun. Put it away. Come on. Ben, what's the matter with you? Getting into a poker game with this pack of thieves. Well, uh, I... Why, half the men at the Ponderosa have lost a lot of money to these card sharpers. Well, exactly. That's that's why I was sitting in with them, to see if I could catch them at it. But, Ben, after all these years, you ought to know that you don't just take matters in your own hands. You come to Roy Coffey. Uh, well, of course, I, I do know that, Roy. There's no mystery about these men. They're, they're just professional gamblers. I'll give you an instance. I'll bet he's got something right here that might be a little help. How about that? A couple aces? Not too bad in a poker game, huh? Listen, boys, if you're smart, you'll take the first stage out of here in the morning. And you won't try to cash those chips. 
How much did they get you for, Ben? Well, it, it wasn't exactly... He was playing for Marcus. Nobody took him for anything. Well, that's good for all of you. Yeah. Ben, we've got something a lot more important than a poker game to take care of. Oh, Come really? On. Well, I, I, uh, I, I think I'd better get back to the uh, Ponderosa. Ben, this can't wait. Believe me. Well... I think I ought to know what this is all about. I might need my lawyer. Ben, a lawyer won't do you any good. Some fast departure he's going to make. He's not going to make one unless he's got a hacksaw to cut them bars. Here he is. <laughs> Told you I wouldn't leave town, Ben. Now, Ben, I'm not going to lecture you on your duties as a citizen, but you just got to sell that timber track to the Central Pacific. I mean, sooner or later, Virginia City's going to need the railroad. Oh, well, of course it will need a railroad. It seems to me that uh, 200000 plus $30,000 in cash is a pretty fair deal. 200000 plus uh, 30000 in cash? Certainly, just like I told you before. I got it right here. Well, I... Uh, I just don't see how I could say no. I told you. I told you you wouldn't find a more public spirited citizen anywhere. Well, I, I try to be. Well, you just sign this bill of sale, Ben, and the thirty thousand is yours. The brand new pen, Ben, and I'll uh, notarize the signature just same as I always do. Like you always do, of course. On second thought, I think I should have a little time to study this, uh, this bill of sale. I know what you're going to do. You're going to go back to that college student again who'll give you a lot of talk about floods and soil erosion. Oh, no, no, of course not. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to talk to any college student at all. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to have a chance to study it, and then you'll have a Cartwright signature. Old Abe Lincoln himself couldn't have done any better. I don't know. It might be a trifle too good. A bit rusty. I haven't had much call for forgery lately. But I can assure you, Mr. Ben Cartwright's signature will be a gem. Yeah, we'll be if we can get our hands on it. We'll get our hands on it. And we'll come up with our deck full of aces. Wentworth, I told you I wanted to look over the bill of sale. I will not be rushed. Well, now don't get excited. I wanted to let you know that my room is just across the hall. I'll be ready whenever you are. Well, the fewer interruptions I have, the sooner I'll be ready. Wentworth, I thought I... <sighs> Miss Wells. What a delightful surprise. I'm sorry I haven't time for visitors right now. Well, you better find the time if you want to stay in business. Well, my dear, no one speaks to Ben Cartwright that way. No one is speaking to Ben Cartwright now. Oh, you're very smart, Mr. Whoever you are. Ben Cartwright wouldn't know how to handle a deck of cards like you did. And he would not have friends like this. I'll take care of that. Violence is no solution. Now, take your hand off her. You're using your head, mister. I have a hunch you're being uh, the spitting image of Ben Cartwright is going to pay very, very well. Why do you say that? Come on. 
You were doing real good at the Lucky Nugget till Roy Coffey showed up. Don't tell me you're going to stop there. Well, you let me handle her. We can get her out of here quietly. No, we're not home. taking any chances. My dear, there is a small deal involved. And if you insist, we'll cut you in for a quarter of the amount. One thousand dollars. If I know you, it's ten times that. It is not. It's only thirty thousand. Thank you for setting us straight. You can put me down for a full 7,500, Mr. What is your name? Meredith. Bradley Meredith. Well, 7,500 is the price for keeping my mouth shut. I'm going to get out of this rotten town and the lucky nugget once and for all. You're not going to agree with her, are you? Please, I will negotiate with her. And I'm sure that when she realizes how much time and effort was spent in preparation, she'll agree to a lesser amount. I do like the way you say things. But the price is still the same. You know, financial discussions between a man and a woman are rather sordid, don't you think? Mm. I would be willing to consider a top price of... Uh, Three thousand, providing you earn it. How? Well, it would be helpful if we had some details about the uh, Ponderosa, the layout of the place, and you know, several other things. Well, I've I've never exactly been invited there socially, but uh, a lot of the ranch hands do come in the Lucky Nugget. Ah, Miss Wells, what is your first name again? Dixie. Dixie, of course, I should have remembered. I'm sorry. Dixie, let us sit down and see what you can remember from these fond associations. You know, Brad, you've got real class. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready right now. Don't worry about what works. He just makes a lot of noise, that's all. There are other timber tracks you could buy. One just 30 miles south of here. Two across the uh, California border. Did you tell him that? He wouldn't listen to me. I did make a list if you'd like to give it to him. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Hop sing neat closely. Black pepper, coffee, mustard, tea, flour, what, 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 Whatever's on the list. Right. Please, don't forget the Chinese tea. Don't forget the China tea. Thank you. When Joe gets back telling goodbye for me. Will do. Timber track. Mr. Conlight! Mr. Conlight! You forget this! But... Oh, of course, the, uh, the list. Well, I, I wasn't really looking for this. Uh, uh, where are... Um, where did you put my, my ledger? Hopsing not put anywhere. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Hopsing. I, uh, I, I'm... Sorry. What I really meant was... Did you see where I put it? Ledger where it always is. On your desk. Perhaps they never touched the book. Hop Singh? Uh, where are my papers? How I know? Hop Singh Cook, not secretary. I thought you might have seen them. You worked late last night. You take the paper upstairs. 
Of course, I should have remembered. Can't find paper? <laughs> How he run big ranch? You, if you want a piece of paper, you say no. Now you say yes. I have no idea what you're talking about. Where's that piece of paper, though? It's important. In trash barrel. In trash barrel? I'll find it. Not that one. This other one. Never mind. I'll get it. I'll get it. Make up your mind. Save trouble. <laughs> Up sing. Where's the key to the desk of my room? Key? I thought you you won list. Oh, forget the list. Where's the key? Up sing, no have key. You have a key in in, in pocket. Never mind. I'll get it open. I found it. It's all right, Hopsing. I found it. I'm sorry if I was a little sharp with you, but there'll be a nice raise for you at the end of the month. Hopsing, go bed now. My heart needs long rest. Nhâm cháu lo. Cái xong. Now here he is. Now what Ridley told us at the hotel we'd find you here. Well, that's good because I've been looking all over town for you. I was <laughs> beginning to get a little worried. <laughs> well, we had to take Fielding down to the stage. Well, well, you haven't changed your mind. Of course, I haven't changed my mind. Good. Then we got a deal. No, we don't have a deal. But uh, Young Fielding made out a list of properties you might like to buy. List? What sort of nonsense is this? Well, a list of timber tracks that you can cut without ruining the watersheds. You gave me your word that you'd sell me that timber. I got the cash right here. I want that bill of sale. Now, look, when, when I told you that I would not sell. Are you going to deny that in front of witnesses you agreed to sell? What witnesses? Roy Coffey and Mayor Blaine. We haven't seen either of them for a week. Don't tell me that. I was there. Maybe you've had a little bit too much to drink. Now you promise to sell me that timber. And you will, or I promise you, you'll spend the rest of your life in court. And I tell you, Mr. Wentworth, I made no such promise. Three of us heard you say it. Mr. Wentworth, are you sure you feel all right? I feel fine. But apparently you two have gone crazy. I'll see you in court. You know, if I was Central Pacific and I hired that feller, I think I'd have to hire me another one, a keeper. <laughs> no, he's not crazy. I don't know what he's up to. I think I'd better stay in town.
Hello there, Mr. Cartwright. Hello. Uh, I'd like to have a room just for the night. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, you've already registered. Here's your key. trouble getting Ben Cartwright's signature? No one was there to spoil things? Uh, no. I don't think so. Well, won't take too long to get the 30000 from that railroad man now, will it? I mean, uh, all you have to do is copy the signature. Oh, oh, God, you, you do a great job with Lincoln. Just great. Well, there, there, uh, there, there may be a delay. Why? I mean, you said he was just itching to hand over the money. Well, uh... Oh, I know what it is, Brad. You're angry with me because I was hard and tough. Because I drove a hard bargain. Oh. No, you've been very helpful. I don't care what share you give me, honest. All I want to do is get out of here and be with you. Mm. Everybody thinks Ben Cartwright is so great. He's nothing but a stuffed shirt. You have got real class. Thank you. Ben Cartwright looks a lot like you. But I could tell the difference right off. He's just a rancher. You are a gent. Oh, You will take me with you, won't you? Uh, yeah, uh, after the deal is, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, finished, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Oh, I'm going over to the Lucky Nugget right now and quit. They're going to have to find another girl to take Dixie's place. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, you mustn't be hasty, Dixie. Oh, I'll take my chances. Good luck, Brad. I wouldn't want Ben Cartwright to show up and ruin everything. Well, I'm... I'm not worried about Ben Cartwright. <laughs> Do you know if Mr. Wentworth is in his room? I believe he's in the dining room. Oh, thank you. Wentworth, I'm going to make you a very happy man. Ben Cartwright, you... You spoiled my whole day. You're not spoiling my supper. I've wired the railroad. Everything's in the hands of the lawyers. The, the, what for? You wanted a signed bill of sale. Here it is. In the 30 years I've worked for the railroad, I've dealt with convicts, hoodlums, even lunatics. No one's ever behaved in this way. What kind of satisfaction are you getting out of all this? I don't understand, but as a man of honor, I, I kept my word. When I get the cash, you get this. I'll get it for you first thing in the morning. In the morning? Well, yes, it's, it's in the Wells Fargo safe. Roy Coffey didn't think it would be smart for me to carry all that cash. Too many thieves around. Well, Mr. Wentworth, if you want to call the deal off, just say so. No, Ben, Ben, Ben. Now, you can trust the railroad. Perhaps. Perhaps not. 
The purchasing agent doesn't seem to be a very stable man. Oh, no, Van, then listen to me. You, you sit right down here, right here. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'll track down that Wells Fargo manager and I'll get him to open the safe. Well, that sounds a little more businesslike. Well, no, don't blame me. You know, none of this would have happened if you hadn't gone through all those shenanigans. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in my room. room key, please. Are you sure you didn't take it, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, absolutely. We have a duplicate. Well, the most efficient hotel. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. It's bad luck. My signature is very good. You could almost fool me. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. It's a shame, you know. All that hard work for nothing. If you'd only stayed out of Virginia City an hour or two longer, it would have been all so simple. Well, I'm sorry if I got in your way. I couldn't interest you in a... Little game of poker, couldn't it? No. Dice? No, I'm afraid I wouldn't do any better at dice. I assure you the stakes would be exceedingly low. If I win, I walk out that door without bothering anyone. I'm sure the sheriff has enough on his mind without... without me. Matter that it isn't just the sheriff. I want Wentworth to come back and see both Ben Cartwrights. I'm afraid he thinks I'm crazy for changing my mind all the time. <laughs> I'm afraid I did confuse him a bit. <laughs> but in a good cause. Fargo manager. You're over at the office now. You better get over there, and I wouldn't waste any time either. I think I'll wait till Wentworth gets back here with the cash. Come on, Meredith, let's get going. We ain't gonna be treated like flunkies no more. And put that gun down. You ain't got the faintest idea of what to do that thing. I'm afraid he does. Gentlemen, Mr. Ben Cartwright. Now throw your guns down. Come on, move. Oh, I, I forgot to mention it. Um, my two associates, Mr. Nicholson, Mr. Murphy. Delighted. Now, what do you say we all pay the sheriff a visit? If you insist. Edith, you first. Is... Is Mr. Cartwright still in his room? I think so, sir. All right, Ben. I, I, got, I got the money, see, like, like you wanted. <laughs> I hope you're happy. I'm afraid not. Oe, oh, I think you'd better put that money back with Wells Fargo, where it's safe. see what we got here. The defendant, Bradley Meredith, with two Confederates, Turk Murphy and Jay Nicholson, did willfully conspire to defraud the Central Pacific Railroad out of $30,000. Now, the three defendants also charged some $500 worth of wearing apparel to the account of Ben Cartwright. Plus one chestnut mare from Milt Jarvis livery stable in Eureka. Now, does that about do it? Well, that's all I know about. Well, if you just sign the statement, we'll take care of the rest.
Man, if you hadn't been so smart, I'd have caught up with Meredith myself. Look what come in this morning. Only for fraud, swindling, bunk games. <laughs> Mr. Meredith sure been a busy man. I know you don't need the money, but that $500 reward could just pay you for your trouble. I didn't expect that. Uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Coffey. Yeah? May I speak with Mr. Cartwright, please? He sure sounds like you, don't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to talk to him? You had enough trouble. Uh, why not? I'd like to know how I was able to convince everybody that he was me. Then you'll have to leave your gun out here. I can't break a rule even for you. After you, Ben. I hate to impose on you, Mr. Cartwright. You've been so kind, but there's something I would like to say to you uh, privately, if I may, Sheriff. Don't make it too long. It's a lesson I should have learned a long time ago. Oh, please sit down. My whole life has been based on a foolish dream. A mythical pot of gold at the end of a non-existent rainbow. Well, all that is in the past. I realize now that a great ranch like the Ponderosa can only be built with sweat and hard work. Hmm. Yes, that's true. Well, that's what it's going to be for me from now on. No more lies, no more deception. And I can assure you, I'll be a changed man when I get out. And I want to thank you for helping me come to that realization. That's all I wanted to say to you. Well, it's very commendable. Good luck, Mr. Meredith. I'm not fooling. I'm asking you to get back now, in Roy, there. Now, Roy, for you goodness sake. Be careful with that gun, Roy. For goodness sake, that, that's Meredith in there. What's Shut up! Do uh, you think that I'd lock myself in, throw out the keys, and then knock myself out? Ben, take these keys and let yourself out of there. Roy, can't you tell the difference between him and me? For goodness sake, how long have you known me? I know the difference. Roy, you're letting that card man get away! Now you get back in that cellar, I'll pull this trigger, so help me. Roy, you're making a terrible mistake. You're not dealing with a small town sheriff, brother. And don't call me Roy. Roy, Sheriff, what's the matter with your eyesight? Can't you see what's that happening there? Sheriff, that's the wrong way! Oh, Roy, for goodness sake! Roy, what's the matter with your eyesight? You feel all right, Ben? Oh, it's fine. I just. There's some people you just can't help them no matter what you do for them. That's right. Well, Roy, I'd best be getting back to the ranch. Ben, you're forgetting your gun. I tell you, he really packs a wallop. I forget it. Oh, and my hat, too. He may just as well take along the $500. I know you don't need it, but you might find a use for it. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'm sure that I'll, uh, I'll be able to find some worthwhile soul who'll be able to make very good use of it. Roy, thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. I'm sorry. As long as you're the sheriff here in Virginia City, they need have no fear about law and order and justice. Thank you, Ben. 